Welcome to Define, the podcast making the most important projects in crypto easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we speak to AP1, the yield derivatives marketplace that lets you tokenize and get yield upfront, as well as hedge risk on APY volatility. So, Ulysse, welcome. It's great to have you here. If you could introduce yourself, who you are, what you do at AP1, and how you got into crypto, what's the, the excitement for you in this industry? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for this question. My name is Yulis Fermaj. I'm one of the co-founders of AP Wine, uh, together with three friends from EPFL, the, the school where I studied in Switzerland. And before AP Wine, I was actually not into blockchain at all. And I like to, to tell a bit about my story because it shows that if you're interested in something, if you're interested in DeFi specifically in blockchain, you can really build your project from day one of learning. And this is how I started. The day after exams, I and Gaspar and my co-founders, we met up, uh, we, we drank some wine, and this is how we came up with the, with the name, and we decided to make a project together. Okay. I was completely you know, clueless about crypto. I didn't even know what Ethereum was. Oh, wow. Okay. But the very same day, we started AP Wine together. Well, Gaspar was already very much into it. He made the Blockchain Student Association, so he already knew a lot about it. But I like to take this example because it shows that, you know, completing each other's skills, you know, the knowledge of crypto plus the knowledge of I do mostly app development mm -hmm. can combine into, you know, a project that cooperates very well and that is very coherent between its members. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, also another thing is a lot of hard work, right? Well, I feel like crypto is one of those industries where it's very rare that it is extremely meritocratic based on the amount of work you put in. If you put in the hours, do the right research with you, the app development, you know, you already have the skills, but to understand the industry, there's no, there's no blockers. There's no nepotism as such. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like that you mentioned this because so a little bit more about my story. I was mostly into game development before and, okay. you know, website development in general. Yeah. Uh, so I was freelancing for, for websites, but also doing games for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I made some games on iOS, Android. Uh, oh, it, wow. it, it, it was very fun. I started back when I was in um, middle school, yeah. uh, all the way to high school, uh, and it was very fun. But I, I have never seen a space like crypto where it is so rewarding to build in this space. Yeah. There, is, there is no other industry like it. Uh, you can literally come up with an idea, an MVP in a few weeks, and raise money, and then you're good to go for the next few years. And you yeah. can just focus on what you love. And this is you know, beautiful in a sense, because yeah. there is really no industry where you can do this. No, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, and yeah, it's great to hear, you know, a little bit more about what you, I guess, uh, started doing when, when you first joined crypto and absolutely. AP1. So at the moment, are you still working on the app development side at AP1? So as a co-founder, of course, you need to wear many hats. Yeah, uh, so yeah. it, it started with me and Gaspar basically building the entire, you know, first version of the app. So the, so the alphas, the betas, and you know, progressively we started building out the team. Now we're we're, we're about fifteen people in the team. Oh, wow. So we have designers, we have you know, contract developers, uh, backend developers, yeah. app developers. So this is also something I want to talk about for a little bit. Um, but as a co-founder, it's it's very important to step back sometimes, try to delegate some of the work, mm -hmm. and be able to plan ahead for the next few months, for the next few years, yeah, you know, definitely. the vision itself. Because it's very easy, especially in crypto, when you're a small team, to get stuck in, you know, the code and yeah, to get yeah. stuck in having your head down into, you know, fix fixing issues and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to step back a little bit plan your vision and it's going to be much more efficient and much more productive than just being 24 hours a day on code. Yeah, definitely. So this is what I'm trying to do at the moment, um, you know, really establish the vision for the products that mm -hmm. we're building at the moment and that we're going to release in the next few months. So if you were at a dinner party and you were describing AP Wine to someone, how would you go about describing what the platform does to them? Because usually we start with explaining and don't worry, I'm going to explain later what it means, but AP Wine is a yield tokenization protocol for tokenizing into PT, FYTs. Oof. And like, as soon as I explain this, you know, people are just lost, which totally makes sense, right? Yeah, for but, sure. These are really advanced concepts. Right. Um, but the principle of DeFi is also to make it accessible to everyone. So if I were to explain AP Wine to someone who doesn't know, you know, DeFi much, I would explain it like this. Imagine that you have an, a marketplace like eBay, where you could sell your salary ahead of time. Oh, and also buy salary ahead of time. So okay. imagine you're earning 30K a year, 
but you need the money right now because you need to pay the rent, you need to pay the bills, you're running late on payments, so you need it right now. You're gonna go on APY, so this eBay marketplace, mm -hmm. and sell your salary for 28K instead. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna say to someone, hey, I'm earning 30K a year, but I'm okay with selling it for 28K. Yeah, got you, to so, receive that money today. Exactly. Yeah. So someone else is going to be like, oh yeah, that's, that's a pretty good you know, discount, that's a pretty good opportunity, why? Mm -hmm. Because if I buy your salary now for 28K instead of 30, mm. I'm going to make a 2K profit at the end of the year, Yeah. right? So that's almost guaranteed because mm -hmm. I know you, I trust you, you're not going to quit your job. Mm -hmm. So it's almost guaranteed profit. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy because I made a profit and you're happy because you got your salary in advance. Yeah. So it's a win-win situation really. And yeah. this is now what we do at AP1, except you replace salary with DeFi yield. Mm -hmm. And you know, this salary could be depositing assets on stake DAO and making a salary out of it, you know, yeah. passive income. Yeah, yeah. And this is what we do on APY, and this is what you can do right now get your salary in advance in DeFi on your stake DAO assets, for example. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. I love the fact you used the eBay example. I think that really puts it into perspective. And just to elaborate for some of our listeners, the strategies from StakeDAO. Actually, already on AP1, there's one or two where we take our yield vault architecture, Absolutely. and essentially you take the, the deposit token, the, the receipt token from the strategy, deposit it into AP1's eBay marketplace, and you can earn the yield which you will get from that strategy over the period of three, six months, one month, whatever the, the term date is today. That's exactly right. And, and just to clarify, we don't actually generate yield. So mm -hmm. how we introduce ourselves, you know, after this first eBay marketplace thing is we are a layer on top of the traditional DeFi farming. Mm -hmm. We're a layer of derivatives on yield. Yeah. So we don't generate yield. We just offer a tool on top of it that allows you to get it in advance. Yeah. So we still need to use platforms like Aave, Wiren, StakeDAO to generate yield. And this is how you know DeFi plugs onto each you yeah, know, the Lego is, bricks, it's, right? It's exactly, the Lego bricks of DeFi. That's that's excellent. Exactly. No, it's um, it's a really good explanation. So I think we have a good understanding about AP One now. Can you tell us a little bit about that, the product specifically? So you you've had a very successful launch. You've managed to gain pretty significant amounts of TVL, and you've also completed a few terms on these um, these derivatives, which essentially you offer. Hmm. And so. First, how was that journey? How was the launch? And has the original problem you were trying to solve evolved? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we learned many lessons um, you know, along the way, of course. We launched the V1 uh, in December 2021, so you know, um, a little bit more than six months ago. Yeah, and we reached just, uh, at just some before point, the big crash. Exactly, exactly. And, and we reached at some point a TVL of uh, 15 million, which for us as a first launch you know, was, was successful. We are definitely, you know, trying to improve on all the challenges that we've faced, and uh, specifically liquidity. It's it's you know mm -hmm. a big problem in DeFi. Yeah. Um, basically, most protocols in DeFi need liquidity to function, and you know this is something that, from what I've seen so far, hasn't really been solved in DeFi yet. So all DeFi protocols, you know, except you know simple interfaces where you just need to deposit withdraw, it hasn't been solved yet. So you always need some kind of liquidity provider. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for APY. So we need this liquidity to function. We have you know, uh, partnered with many different projects to, uh, to, to, to try to tackle this challenge. Yeah. But the big, um, one of the big challenges that we faced is the EU user interface. So the user mm -hmm. experience and how you provide liquidity. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the points that we're trying to improve for the next versions of the app. Right, um, and that connects into your earlier point about delegating, managing the team, and making sure that people can specifically focus on the UI, UX, right, the growth and integration of protocols right. looking forward to the next two, three months. Exactly. And this is also why you know we've decided to invest more and more into uh, UI and UX research. So mm -hmm. at the moment, you know, we're working with a, with a UX agency to yeah. kind of find innovations in the space that we can bring to Web3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there are many UX innovations to bring. For sure. Uh, for example, Uniswap totally invented and brought this very simple swap interface that yes. everybody knows now. Yes. You go on Uniswap, you go on SushiSwap, you go on Balancer, it's always the same thing. It's input, output, the little arrow to switch. Yeah. It's always the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. 
but they brought it you know as far as i know they were one of the first to do this kind of very simple DeFi swap yeah, interface yeah, yeah. and this is only one of the you know many examples that that we could point out um how to bring user interface innovation in the space yeah so this is what we're trying to do at the moment yield tokenization so what we're doing at, at ap1 is a very complex topic and it's a very complex interface that comes with it. And so this is really what we're trying to make simpler for people. Yeah. And I hope, uh, you know, and we're working towards this, that the user interface will be as easy to use as my initial explanation about the eBay marketplace that I brought earlier. So if you understood the eBay marketplace that I did at the beginning, you will love what's coming. Oh, wow. Exciting. Can you, uh, can you share any alpha? How far, how far away do we have to look? We are, um, we are launching two products okay. soon. Uh, we can't tell much about it uh, yet, but they are going to plug onto AP Wine very well, and they are going to show the entire potential of yield tokenization and yield in advance. Oh, wow. That's really exciting. I can hear the, the confidence in your voice. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I'm really well, looking forward to that. We are definitely very excited to tell you all about it. Uh, this is just you know something that's still work in progress and that we have yet to announce, but when yeah. we will announce, you know, I will make sure to to let you all know, and we'll be very happy to discuss it. Naturally, Absolutely. amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm sure at some point in the future we will we will get back. Just <laughs> just just touching on that actually, the the future. So how are you how are you looking forward to the next, let's say half to one year following? What's the what's the goal for AP One? Right. So the goal, as always, you know, is is trying to stay with the current team and be as efficient as as possible try to be you know completing each other's skills this is something that i've you know talked about before mm -hmm. um, but just continuing our vision of yield tokenization in space yield derivatives and uh, this is really what we're working on yield tokenization is not just one of our first products um, you know so for the next six months we're going to be very hard at work on all these new features and products coming um, and we were fortunate enough uh, to be able to secure funding for the next two years so this is you know also something that's uh, worth mentioning uh, in, in DeFi, in the DeFi space, you know, if, if you have funds to subsist with your project, you're basically good to go when you can just focus on building what you love. And Definitely. so, you know, waking up every day, I'm, I'm talking personally, waking up every day, having such an amazing team to work with, having such amazing partners, you know, that we discuss every day, even with, <laughs> yeah, with, yeah. with Take That with you guys. Um, and just building what I love, it's, it's, I'm so fortunate to be able to be in this space at yeah, this stage, definitely. at this point in time. Um, so yeah, this is just great. I'm very much looking forward to the next two years. Yeah, that's that's really good to hear. Um, so maybe we can just dive in a little bit more. Um, at the moment, you are seeking to scale the platform through two means predominantly. One is UI UX innovations, and two is working with partner protocols to solve this liquidity crisis, this liquidity crunch. Mm -hmm. And as this DeFi bear market evolves, how do you see that problem changing? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so there's not much I can I can tell without leaking too much in on, onto the onto the things that we're building. But there are models that we've seen in DeFi where where liquidity issues are actually you know incentivized through you know for example curve gauges. Yes. And yes. this is you know also you have the liquid yeah, lockers on stake out lock. incentivized also by the stake out locking rate. Exactly, yeah. And so this is um in, in my opinion um a very efficient way of you know incentivizing liquidity and so this is really what we're looking at at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um there are other mechanisms that I would love to to talk about uh, that I will probably talk uh, about in, in a later podcast but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is one of the things you know we're looking at what's been done in the space and we're going to take the best out of it to kind of extract, you know, what's really working in DeFi. And yeah. gauges are definitely one of them. Yeah, I think I think that makes a lot of sense. Just to touch on on the liquid lockers as well, this uh, this VE token architecture has seemed to really gain a lot of speed within DeFi. Almost every project that I speak to has involved some level of VE yeah. gauge tokenomics. Absolutely. And of course, with our with things like projects that are whitelisted, such as StakeDAO and and a few other big ones, people can get access to liquidity like this. And Absolutely. potentially, there could be a tokenization, a future yield of a lock token, uh, as as comes from from AP One. Absolutely, absolutely, that's a very good point. And 
you know, that's a very good use case for AP1 as well, because the long-term vision for AP1 is to, is to be able to plug onto any yield generating asset, whatever the yield may be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, liquid lockers generating yield plus being liquid is just a perfect use case for AP1. So very much looking forward to integrating more with you guys. Likewise. Can you tell us a little bit about the initial problem that you were trying to solve for when you had this idea of AP1 over some wine? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a good one. Uh, so the initial problem, you know, was of course the contract design and implementation. This was a very interesting challenge to solve. You know, Gaspar did and, and the contract team did an amazing work at implementing very complex mechanisms in a way that works, you know, currently and that is way ahead of technically competitors out there. So for example, you know, this is just something that we have in the V1. Uh, we have automatically um, renewal of PTs, and this is something that's not present in other protocols. Uh, this is just one of the examples, you know, of, of what we have currently and that we had to think a lot about. So this introduced a lot of challenges, you know, whether it be auditing wise or whether it be logical wise. Uh, but this, this is just technical. Yeah. In terms of design also, because this is more like the part that I'm leading, uh, in terms of UI and UX and the liquidity provision, as I've said before, it's very difficult to make someone understand the protocol and to, and to make someone deposit on the platform exposing them to a certain degree of risk related mm -hmm. to liquidity mm -hmm. provision and so on. And, so and how even understanding why they should in the first place. Like, right, absolutely. Could you talk a little bit about that? Like why would someone want to cash in their their paycheck early on? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you, you mean you mean more like how, why would you get your salary in advance? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that, that would be just a use case of you know day to day basis or for specific strategies. So, for example, if you want to get your paycheck in advance to pay for your gym subscription, your Netflix subscription, this is totally something you can do on APY right now. But you know, on the more complex spectrum of use cases, it could also be for hedge funds or you know DAOs to get their yield in advance pay salaries to employees without even touching their capital. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, you're getting your salary in advance, you're paying directly, and you don't need to spend any of your treasury. Yeah. So this is a use case that we're actively exploring, you know, working with DAOs so that they get their salary in advance and don't have to touch anything. Yeah, that's really exciting. So it's, it's like a, it's almost enabling people to forward budget. It's quite similar in that sense to some traditional solutions that already exist, such as buy now, pay later, but just on chain and in a completely trustless manner. That's exactly right. Uh, and also another example I'd like to mention is that we are similar to the pipe.com of DeFi. Okay. <clears throat> so essentially, we, we allow you to get your cash flow as a company or as an in individual in advance so that you can pay your expenses in advance. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a really interesting tool for DAO treasuries in particular. I loved your example about budgeting in advance, Absolutely. putting stuff into a, into a strategy, not having to worry about it for six months, nine months, and in the meantime, you can pay the yield. And at the end of this term, whatever you might be having, your budget meetings, you can, you can have another discussion around that. That's Absolutely. a really solid use case. Absolutely. And, and you also you know, hedge your risk on the APY volatility. And DeFi is a lot about risk. You know, we're still experimenting every day, and there's projects, you know, um, you know, of course, apart from rugging directly, um, there's a lot of risk, whether it be in terms of liquidations, you know, interest rate volatility, and AP1 just reduces this risk by enabling you to get everything in advance at a fixed rate. Mm, okay. So can you tell us about that, the hedging of APY volatility? What, what does that mean? Yeah, totally. It means that, you know, if you're farming on Aave, stake DAO, you're getting 5%, 10% per year on stablecoin, for example. Yeah. So what you want to do is go on AP1 and instead of 5%, you're going to get 4.5%, but in advance and at a fixed rate. Mm. Because the problem with the traditional DeFi farming is that your APY, so your interest rate, could very well go to 1% or 0%. Yeah. It could also double, triple, but you know, in, in general, APY is just very risky and it's very, yes, yes. It, it tends to Extremely go... Extremely volatile. It tends to go down. So you want to hedge yeah. your risk on this. Yeah, okay. I see. That makes a lot of sense. And the other thing I wanted to ask about, um, this seems so unique within DeFi. I think you were the first project which I came across who were doing this kind of thing. But I'm sure you might have some competitors in the space, not 
maybe directly working within your vertical or adjacent verticals. How is the environment around AP1 at the moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. When we started back in, in August 2020, um, you know, just before the DeFi summer, um, actually during the DeFi summer, and this is where we, we kind of saw the use case for AP1, um, nobody was talking about yield tokenization. So we really came up with this term. Now, yield tokenization has become kind of a standard in, the, in, this, in, the, in this industry. Um, and it's something you can see in protocols such as Element, uh, Pendle. Uh, there is also Alchemix, which works in, in a different way. But I would say the ecosystem as a whole, you know, it's very healthy to have projects working on the same kind of topic, right? Although everyone has different approaches, I can maybe explain this on later. Um, but it's very good to have this because then you're, you're incentivizing, in a way, natural incentivization of innovation. Because if some protocol doesn't innovate, they're going to go down at some point. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I love the way you guys are thinking about that. It's, it's coming across very clearly that you place a high value on this culture of innovation and the ideas win within AP1, which is, which is excellent to see. The other thing we, we did discuss a little bit around liquidity, and it was curious you mentioned Alchemex, who are producing a similar solution. Mm. The way that they actually solved for their liquidity crisis is by using the stake DAO lockers. Mm -hmm. um, to incentivize the curve gauges, like you said, as one of the main ways of, of getting access to liquidity within crypto. So the fact that you mentioned there might be something along these lines with stake down in the future is tremendously exciting. And I think something for a lot of our listeners to look forward to. Absolutely. As I've said before, we have looked at what's working in DeFi, at, some, at how some projects have managed to you know, solve their liquidity issues successfully. And we're looking to improve on this and you know, follow the same path uh, of, you, know, you don't change a team that works. Yeah. So yeah, very excited about what's coming. Amazing. Well, Ulysses, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Just before we wrap up, is there anything that you'd like to shout out, cover? We're at ECC right now filming, so I know you might have some events coming up, but maybe there's something exciting to look forward to just afterwards as well. Absolutely. So please first follow me on Twitter, uh, at Yulidev on Twitter, uh, follow IP Wine Finance. Um, and we have a booth at ECC, so please, you know, check it out. We're going to be releasing boxes every day, and there is a chance that you will get a Ladegen ticket in one of these boxes. Oh, wow. So this is like some Charlie in the, in the you know, chocolate, chocolate factory. factory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. So yeah, That's please, um, you know, ch check it out. Uh, we would be super happy to meet you in person if you are ECC. If you're not, please stay in touch on Twitter and socials, um, you know, and, and would be super happy to give you a demo of AP1 if you're discovering DeFi or already you're a DeFi expert. We are here to help and to discuss with you. So thank you very much. Really appreciate your time here. Likewise, it was a pleasure to have you. Okay.